2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 17. For the love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Mosaic Recovery Community Ministry. I am Pastor Michael. I'm excited. I'm both thrilled and grateful to be able to bring to you this message of hope this evening. Now, for those of you who've been following along with us, you know that we've been walking through the 12 steps of the NAAA program. And you also know that we've been showing how the NA and AA material parallels to the Bible. In fact, it points us towards the Bible. It points us towards a need for salvation and for Christ in our lives. And so here at the Mosaic Recovery uh, Ministry, we have an intentional purpose of developing the unlikely leader, right? We know that many of us have been, um, you know, written off. Um, people have washed their hands with us, right? They, they've um, pretty much resigned us to the fact that we'll never be any good to anyone ever again. But God says different. And we realize that. And so through this ministry, we are focused on developing people to be leaders, leaders in their families, leaders in their communities. We're, we're focused on creating um, disciples that go on to make disciples. Um, now we understand that you probably won't go on to um, be vocational in a church, right? Or you may not be bivocational, right? But we do know that whatever God has intended for you, you'll go and you'll do those things. And so we've broken it down into three phases. The first phase is restoring the relationship. This is where we enter into a relationship with Christ for the first time, or we recommit to a relationship with Christ. Then we go on to recover our identity. This is when we find out who Christ is to us and who we are to Christ and who he intended for us to be from the beginning. And then we move on to capturing our purpose. This is where we learn um, the purpose that God has for us or um, a ministry that God has for us or a mission that God has for us, an assignment that God has for us. And we um, develop that purpose and then we walk in that purpose. And so the first three steps, um, step one says, we admitted we were powerless over our addiction, that our lives had become unmanageable. Step two says, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. And step three says, uh, made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood God. And so this is the relationship step, right? These are these three steps um, focus on restoring the relationship. And now step four says, made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Step five says, admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact natures of our wrong. Step six says, we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Step seven says we humbly ask God to remove our shortcomings. Step eight says we made a list of all persons we harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Step nine says made direct amends to such people whenever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Step 10 says we continue to take personal inventory and when we were wrong, we promptly admitted it. Now step 11 says we sought through prayer and meditation to approve our conscious contact with God as we understood God, praying only for God's will for us and for the power to carry that out. And so these steps, these are the uh, recovering identity steps. And so we move into step 12 as we come to um, a close in our, uh, in our step studies. Um, and step 12 says, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we tried to carry the message to addicts and to practice these principles in all our affairs. Now this is the step that leads us into our purpose, right? This is the step that takes us into um, the space where we begin to capture the purpose that God has for us. And then we begin to learn how to walk 
in no in that purpose. And so the scripture reference that will um will parallel this to is Acts chapter twenty two verses eleven through sixteen. So if you have your Bibles, um, I want to encourage you to um, open them and um, read along with me. Um, Acts twenty two eleven through sixteen, and it reads, "I was blinded by the intense light." and had to be led by the hand to Damascus by my companions. A man named Ananias lived there. He was a godly man, deeply devoted to the law and well regarded by the Jews of Damascus. 13, he came and stood beside me and said, Brother Saul, regain your sight. And at that very moment, I could see him. 14, then he told me the God of our ancestors has chosen you to know his will and to see the righteous one and to hear him speak. Verse 15, for you are to be his witness, for you are to be his witness, telling everyone what you have seen and heard. 16, what are you waiting for? Get up, be baptized, have your sins washed away by calling on the name of the Lord. And so tonight I want to talk to you from the subject of, it's not about you, it's about the gospel. It's not about you, it's about the gospel. Let me pray. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us this evening and anoint us with your presence. Receive us into your bosom, a place of refuge and a place of comfort. Shower the seed that has been planted in us that it may grow and bear good fruit. Father God, rain your word down on us like manna from heaven, giving us the bread of life that feeds and nourishes our spirit. Holy Spirit, have your way in this message. Father God, may I be moved to the back and may you be moved to the front. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. And it's in the matchless name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. And so as we dive into this message, you know, I, I know I've told my story many times, right, about how I came to the program and how I eventually started the, re the process of recovery, right? I've talked about the struggles. I've talked about the fights, the uncertainty, etc. Right, you've heard all of this before. Well, many of you have. Those of you who've been connected with Mosaic or been connected with the recovery uh, ministry um, or who have heard my testimony or have heard me speak somewhere before. But, but here's the piece you've never heard before, right? Here's the piece most people don't talk about. Here's the butt naked truth most people try to avoid, right? Here's the road that's less traveled. Honesty, transparency, and vulnerability. Right, and the willingness to expose our deepest and darkest secrets. Right, there was about maybe two, three, maybe four, maybe more weeks of me being in the program, working the steps of recovery where I told myself I was gonna use my recovery. Now, you hear what I said? I was gonna use my recovery to exact revenge on all those who I felt did me wrong. Oh yeah, I was gonna show some people, right? All those people who wouldn't put up with my BS anymore, I was gonna show them. Right. All the people who said no to me, all the people who said I would never be anything. Right. I was going to show them all those who rejected me. I was going to show them I was going to take my recovery. I was going to get fresh and I was going to crap on everybody who I felt crapped on me. Right. All the women who rejected me because I was broken, looked a little rough sometime. All the women who left me because I cared more about being in the streets than I did about being with them. Right. I was going to knock them off. Plus some, I was, and, and don't get it twisted now, I was going to take my recovery and I was going to become a monster out here in these streets. And see, this is where I had it wrong. This is where I was setting myself up for a failure. See, I hadn't been in recovery but about a month and a half and, and so I started to feel out, right? My complexion started to clear up, right? I instantly got a pay raise. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about out there. Um, I was looking good, I was smelling good, right? I was feeling good and I was ready to do some damage out here in these streets. And see, these are thoughts you don't hear on a regular, right? And so you must understand, for me, I wasn't always a pastor, right? My mind hasn't always been renewed, right? And these were my intentions. Now, I was still new to the program, and I, and I had no idea what Step 12 embodied. I hadn't had a spiritual awakening yet. I hadn't realized that this wasn't my recovery, right? I hadn't realized why God had allowed me to go through all of the stuff that I went through and, and be able to live to tell about it. I hadn't realized that my recovery was a gift from God given to me, not for my glory, but for his glory and to fulfill his purpose. I hadn't entered into a relationship yet. I hadn't recovered my identity yet. I had no real purpose other than to satisfy my own selfish 
um, needs and desires. I hadn't realized that my recovery had absolutely nothing to do with me, but everything to do with God and his message. And so what's this message, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. The message is 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. If anyone be in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has passed away and behold, the new has come. The message is if you receive Christ in your life, recovery is possible. Being made new is possible. And God has called me to be an example of this. And so how do I become an example of this, right? I become an example by showing what people, what it looks like to be in a relationship with Christ. Now, I don't become an example by how fresh I can get or how much money I have. I, I don't become an example by how many women I can knock off, right? I don't become an example by um, exacting revenge on all those who I felt did me wrong. I do, however, become an example by being a person of integrity and having good character, right? I become an example by being generous, right? I become an example by being humble, by being forgiving, right? By sharing the gospel and pointing people towards the one who saved my life. Now, we must understand that this revelation doesn't come under overnight, right? Now, I told you it took me weeks, took me months before I got it, and it's taken me years to live out this revelation. This revelation comes by working the steps and having a spiritual awakening, right? It's because uh, it's because a result of working these steps that we enter into a relationship with God. We recover our identity in Christ and we capture our purpose that God has intended for us. This is about being more than just sober. And so a question I want to ask you is, since you've been in recovery, what have you done? What are some of the things that you've accomplished? Have you had an impact in someone's life? Who have you shared Christ with? Or has it been just about you and only you? See, through this revelation, we understand that it's no longer about us. It's about Christ and spreading the gospel. We must understand that revelation is just uncovering something that was already there. It's been there the whole time, but now it's uncovered through revelation. See, it's always been about Christ. It's always been about his message. And through working the steps, we come to this revelation. Now, it's about being an example and an inspiration to those who are or will walk in the shoes that we once walked. But through Christ, everybody say Christ, we could be made whole and we can live how, how God intended for us to live. We can find our purpose and we can live out that purpose. Now the book says on page 113 of It Works How and Why, in a sense, the, the 12th step encompasses all the steps. We must make use of what we learned in the previous 11 steps as we carry the message and practice the principles of recovery in all our affairs, individually and collectively. Each step has contributed to the extraordinary transformation, which we know as a spiritual awakening. Mm. So, in other words, each step led us to being connected spiritually with Christ so that we can be made new in our minds and our bodies, our actions and our behaviors, so that we can go and tell somebody about what Christ has done for us and that he could do it for them and that without Christ, none of it would be possible. The book also says on page 118 of It Works How and Why, step 12 has a paradoxical aspect in that the more we help others, the more we help ourselves. The more we help others, the more we help ourselves. For instance, if we find ourselves troubled and our faith wavering, there are very few actions that have such an immediate uplifting effect on us as helping a newcomer. Now, hold on, Pastor. Wait a minute. You said it wasn't about me, but here it says that it is. See, the paradox is this. As I'm helping someone else, God is helping me. The message is first given to me so that I can then carry the message. The message is ministered to me first, right? I am first transformed so that I know how powerful this message is and how important this message is. If I don't believe the message, I can't carry the message out, right? If the message isn't ministered to me and I don't believe it, I can't minister it to somebody else. If I'm no good, I can't be any good to anyone else. And so as I pour into people, God pours into me, right? The principle is trust in God that he will take care of me so that I can take care of the mission. Let me say that again. That's very important. The principle is trust in God that he will take care of us so that we can take care of the mission. Even in the midst of our struggles, 
we stay focused on Christ, on his message, and on our purpose, and he will strengthen us along the way. Now, right now, I feel like I'm talking to somebody out there, right? Right? I know that this may be a little deep for some of us, right? But for right now, I think God is speaking to somebody, right? They're trying to understand. They're trying to understand how God brought them to this place of recovery. And it's not about them, right? Somebody feels like they're at the end of their rope. They've been carrying this message and it's weighing them down, right? I'm here to tell you that God is about to give you the strength that you need to keep carrying the message, right? Somebody right now is confused about what they should be doing. I'm here to tell you that God is about to give you a purpose, right? Somebody's been clean for years, right? For decades, right? And today is the day you enter into recovery and get a spiritual awakening. Now, the truth is everybody won't get this. Everyone won't receive this message. That's why the book says we tried, right? I tried to tell them, but they just wouldn't listen. The Spirit of God gives us compassion for the newcomer or someone new to their faith. And when they walk away or relapse and give back what was freely given to them, we may get discouraged. Our faith may waver. We may be troubled, right? But we continue to carry the message with the hope, right? With the hope that just as this message was ministered to us and our lives were changed, it will change someone else's life. It is in this hope that our faith and our strength is renewed. And so let me take a time out right now. Um, Nasambi, who's uh, a part of our recovery ministry, she also has a um, Christ-centered recovery house. Um, I remember when she, when God first gave her this vision, right? When God first called her to this ministry and her and I were talking and um, she was asking me, she was like, how do you cope with when somebody enters into the program, right? They taste and see that the Lord is good and then they walk away and go back to those things that was destructive in their life. Like, how do you how do you manage that? You know, and, and I told her, I said, look, I don't want you to think that I'm minimizing any of that, but if I focus on those, then I can't do what God wanted me to do, wants me to do um, or, 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 or focus on what's in front of me, right? I'll be stuck here. Now, I pray for them, right? I mourn them. I lament the fact that they walked away, but I have to focus on the newcomer. I have to focus on carrying the message, right? I can't get stuck here. I got to keep moving forward. And so I wish I could tell you that this ministry was easy, right? That carrying this message wasn't heavy, but I can't. In fact, it may be one of the hardest things you can do. That's why something extraordinary has to take place, right? And something spiritual must happen because on our own, we can't do it. We don't have the ability to do it without God. But through our relationship with Christ, we are connected to God's spirit. He who gives us the supernatural, extraordinary strength to do the things we otherwise wouldn't be able to do. Things like carry a message of hope and recovery, right? Things like live a life that's pleasing and acceptable to God, right? Things like being selfish and self selfless and not selfish, right? Things like being humble and not prideful, right? The book says on page 118, it works how and why. Now we must ask ourselves, just what is the message we are trying to carry on? Is it that we never have to use drugs again? Is it that through recovery, we cease being likely candidates for jails, institutions, or early death? Is it that, is it the hope that an addict, any addict can recover from the disease of addiction? Hmm. My friends, the message is simply this. Second Chronicles 7:14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. This is restoring the relationship. The message is this, my friends, Second Corinthians 5 and 17. If anyone be in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has gone. The new has come. This is recovering your identity. The message, my friends, is Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 20, teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you, teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you to the end of the age. This is capturing your purpose and walking in that purpose. If you still have your Bibles open, turn with me to... Uh, um, let's read Acts 22, 11 through 16 again. 
and it says, I was blinded by the intense light and had to be led by the hand to Damascus by my companion. A man named Ananias lived there. He was a godly man, deeply devoted to the law and well regarded by all the Jews of Damascus. He came and stood beside me and said, Brother Saul, regain your sight. And that very moment I could see him. 14, then he told me the God of our ancestors has chosen you to know his will and to see the righteous one and hear him speak. For you are to be his witness, telling everyone what you have seen and heard. What are you waiting for? Get up and be baptized. Have your sins washed away by calling on the name of the Lord. I got to tell you, the word of God is so good. This preaches itself, right? This thing right here preaches itself. If I said nothing else after that, we could just close these books and go on home because that said it all. But since I got a little bit more time, let me share a few more thoughts with you. See, here we see that Paul has a spiritual awakening. He has an encounter with Christ and his life is transformed. He enters into this relationship with Christ and is given a new identity. Paul, this murderer of Christians, right? Paul, this Pharisee. Paul, this cruel and wicked man. Paul, this man who literally is on his way to go and slaughter Christians, innocent people, men, women, and children, right? This is what the road to Damascus was for Paul, a, a road that he traveled to go and do some damage, but it was along this road he had an encounter with Christ and his life was forever changed. Now, you may be thinking that God can't use me, right? I've done too much, right? He surely won't forgive me of the things I've done, Pastor. Well, we see here that Paul is our example that God can and will use anyone. And so after Paul has his spiritual awakening and, and, and restores his relationship, he receives his identity. Then God says, everybody say God. God gives him a purpose. And Paul lives out that purpose all the days of his life. Paul would go on to carry the message to all those who were still sick and suffering. And what is the message as we, as we close? What is the message? The message is relationship. The message is recovery. The message is purpose. This is the message and these are the principles. I don't care who you are and what you have done. Christ is for you and has a plan for your life. You may be sitting there thinking, I'm not ready, right? I've got some stuff I need to do. I got some stuff I need to take care of and clear up, right? I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it next week or I'll do it next year, right? I need to think about it, Pastor. Well, the Bible says in verse 16, what are you waiting for? Get up and be baptized. Have your sins washed away by calling on the name of the Lord. And so I ask you, what are you waiting for? The time is now. Get up and restore your relationship with God. Recover your identity in Christ and capture the purpose that God has for you and walk in that purpose. And so as we close here tonight, I just want us to reflect on a few questions. Um, I want you to understand that I've asked myself these questions many, many times and I've answered them. And so now I ask you these same questions. Why am I in recovery? What have I done since being in recovery? And how can I have an impact in someone's life now that I'm in recovery? I want to encourage you to ask yourself these questions and answer them. Let me pray. Father God, I thank you for these words that you have given me to speak. If I have said anything that is not of you, I pray that you will remove that. But if I have said something that is of you, brother, I pray that that would stick, that it would pierce our hearts and convict our hearts and force us to change, not encourage us to change. Yes, we wanna be encouraged, but we wanna be forced to change that we may have a spiritual awakening, that we may carry your message to all those who are still sick and suffering and that we may practice these spiritual principles in all our affairs. Father, have your way in our life. Use us in whatever way you see fit. We give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory, and it's in the matchless name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. And so I want to encourage you also that uh, Mondays um, from 6.30 to 7.30, we're meeting here at Mosaic 80 West Alexandrine, um, in Detroit, Michigan, that's in Midtown. We meet here from 6.30 to 7.30 for our um, recovery ministry um, where we focus on um, the role that Christ plays in our recovery and we 
focus on developing unlikely leaders, right? Through restoring the relationship, recovering our identity and capturing our purpose. And so um, I just hope that this message blessed you as much as it's blessed me. Until the next time, um, carry the message.